Hello and welcome, thanks for tuning in, and on today's video we have another great product review. I just received another mini PC from Kodalix, and this one has twice the power and performance than the previous one. Presenting, the Kodalix U500, Intel Core i3 Windows 10 Mini PC. I am literally excited to see what this one can do after the great performance in my last mini PC review. So after the break, buckle your seat belts because I'm taking this baby for a spin. Before we get started, I would like to alert you to the fact that this video is very long, divided into two main segments, the Windows operating system, and my personal dual boot to Android x86 project. This mini PC is not for everyone, but if you are a fan of powerful mini PCs and installing dual boot operating systems, turning these PCs into super TV boxes with insane benchmarks, then this video is for you. So to get started we have the box that it's packaged and shipped in. It's a very strong box with the model printed nicely to the front here. All the specs and certifications are printed below, let's see what it says. In the description it says that this mini PC runs on the Intel Core i3 processor, it has dual HDMI outputs for dual monitor display, and it has a SATA expansion bay with a capacity of up to 2TB, and an M2 expansion slot with a capacity of up to 512GB, it also uses DDR3L SODIMM memory, and I'll show all that in a second. Under the product specification, it shows that the model is the U500. The CPU is the Intel Core i3, running up to 2.0 GHz. The GPU is the Intel Graphics 5500. It comes with 8 GB of RAM and 128 GB on the internal system disk. It already mentioned the SATA expansion bay and the M2 slot information above. It has Ethernet LAN speeds of up to 1000 megabits per second, and it has 80211 AC dual band 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. That's some good specs for you right there, and I will just take a minute to do a quick unboxing. In the box, you have the mini PC itself. You get a pair of HDMI cables, a short and a long one. You get a 12 volts 3 amps DC power adapter. A detachable SATA cable and screws. A pack of replacement rubber legs. A mounting bracket and screws for mounting to the back of your TV. And a user's operation guide. This is a mini PC, so you don't get a mouse and keyboard in your purchase. However, you can purchase an air mouse or wireless touchpad keyboard to control this computer. Let's examine its design and what input-output peripheral ports we have on this PC. The housing is made of plastic, with the Codelix logo to the top. To the front, you have two USB 3.0 ports, one USB Type-C port, an earphone jack, and a power button with an LED power light. To the back, you have two HDMI ports, one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, two USB 2.0 ports, and your DC power input. Also on the side here you have the CPU's ventilation outlet, as you can see the heatsink through the vent holes. To the top edge there is a little groove here that you pop open to access the SATA expansion bay and the M2 port inside. I will return to that in a few minutes. To the side, you have a microSD card reader. And to the bottom, you have the intake vent for the CPU cooling fan. So to access the storage expansion bay and the M2 port, you simply pop open the top cover using this groove right here like this. On 
On the inside of the top cover there's a bracket for the SATA drive, and four holes for you to secure it with screws. On the inside of the PC itself, here you have a pin connector for connecting the SATA cable to the motherboard. Here you have the M2 slot, and currently it has a 128GB M2 card inserted into it which is your internal storage. Next to that you have one DDR3 8GB 1600 memory card. On this mini PC you can change out the memory and install a maximum single 16GB SODIMM memory card. The M2 port can take a 512GB 2280 card NGFF. And the SATA port can take a 2.5-inch SSD or HDD up to 2TB. Below the motherboard there's a CPU cooling fan and heatsink, and it's the same cooling fan design used in laptops. For a full detailed data spec sheet with fan noise and heat pipe reading, along with a detailed test report from the manufacturer, a PDF link was placed in the description area. So I will now install this 500GB SSD and connect this to my TV which I will be using as a monitor in this review. So I am back, and I've connected it to the HDMI port on my TV. And as I boot up the PC for the first time, you have the usual Windows first login setup wizard. Once you have completed these steps, you're then taken to your Windows 10 desktop featuring Microsoft's Cortana Assistant. So we are here at Windows Desktop and the first bit of information I'm going to show is its Windows license information. It shows that you are running on Windows 10 Professional. Here you have the processor information which I will return to in a minute. You have 8GB of RAM on a 64-bit operating system. It also shows that Windows is activated, so you don't have to worry about bootlegged versions which is illegal. To confirm that the drive was successfully installed into the storage expansion bay, I will open File Explorer and check my PC information. It showed that the second D drive here is my 500GB SSD. As I proceed, the first order of business is to check the system and hardware information. To check this information I'm using the ADA64 Extreme application. This app is the Windows version of the one used on Android boxes. Under Computer System Information, it shows that the chipset is a 64-bit based PC mobile hardware. The operating system is Microsoft Windows 10 Professional, and it comes with DirectX version 12, which is the highest version at this time. Under Motherboard Information, it shows that the CPU type is a dual-core Intel i3 CPU with a clock speed of 2.0 GHz. You have the name of the motherboard, and it shows that it's a Broadwell chipset. It comes with 8GB of DDR3 RAM, and it also shows the RAM specification. The display is powered by the Tricore Intel HD Graphics 5500, which has a max dynamic frequency of 850 MHz and a refresh rate of 60 Hz. The audio adapter is the Realtek ALC269, with SRS True Surround HD, and HDMI Digital Audio. The internal storage is a 128GB hood disk drive, and you have just 119GB remaining after the Windows installation and apps I have installed. The network adapter is the Intel Dual Band Wireless AC1365, that has a max speed of 433 megabits per second on the 5GHz band, and it has Bluetooth 4.2 support. For detailed specs on the CPU, the GPU, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth information, see the links in the description area. Well that's it for system and hardware information, and I'll now move on to the benchmarks. First, I have the results of the RAM and internal storage read and write speeds. The Nova Bench results show that the Codelix U500 has a RAM copy speed of 8674MB per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 406 megabytes per second and a write speed of 507. In comparison to the Codelix GN41, this mini PC produced a score that is twice as high, which makes it a more powerful mini PC which is great for gaming and adopting the function as a TV box also. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and Ethernet LAN speed results. On my 60 MB internet package the U500 was able to hit the maximum speed with every attempt on the 2.4, 5 GHz and Ethernet LAN port. Also take note of the upload speeds I got during this test, they are twice as high, compared to what I would usually get on an Android box. 
Next, I have the results of the Antutu Benchmark Windows Edition. The Kotlix U500 got a score of 167,797. This score is 30% higher than the GN41, but it is based on Antutu Benchmark version 6, which is designed to benchmark devices with OpenGL ES 2.0 and under. I will attempt to run an Android operating system on this PC later on, and then run version 7 for OpenGL ES 3.0 and over. I will now show the results of the Geekbench 4 CPU Benchmark, the Windows Edition. Here it shows the CPU has a base frequency of 2.0 GHz and the same applies to the maximum frequency. The results show that the U500 got a score of 2,368 single-core, and 4,344 multi-core. These scores are again higher than any TV box on record. But when compared to the GN41, the multi-core score is slightly lower. For my final results, I have the Ice Storm Extreme and the CloudGate GPU Graphics Benchmark, part of the Treaty Mark Gamers Bench application used on mobile devices. The results show that the U500 got an Ice Storm Extreme score of 26,939, and in the CloudGate test, it got a score of 3,888. When compared to the GN41, these scores are higher by 24%, and it gives you a clear picture of the vast difference in power and performance of the U500. And that's it for the benchmarks, I will now demonstrate some of the things you can do on this device. So what you can do on this mini PC, is by all means use it to perform all the basic functions you would normally perform on a regular desktop. I installed the full suite of Office applications. This makes it ideal for small office presentations with dual HDMI outputs, where you can duplicate display between a monitor and a projector. I have three windows open with the main office apps and they are fully functional. The Windows 10 operating system comes with Windows Defender, that does an OK job to protect your PC against viruses and malicious software. You also have the option to install your preferred choice of antivirus protection software. I installed a vast free antivirus, and it works great to protect against malware and harmful websites. Once you have properly secured your PC you are then free to install any browser to surf the web. I installed Chrome browser, Mozilla Firefox, and Windows already comes with Microsoft Edge. I will now run an official malicious simulator test website called Fortinet.com, to test the antivirus software I installed. Well you are well protected with the free version, and if you want higher protection you can subscribe to premium features. See the link in the description area. Another way to use the Codelix U500 is to use it as an entertainment center to stream movies and TV shows, play 4K videos and Windows games. It is small enough to fit next to your TV, or you can use the included bracket to mount it to the back of your TV or HD monitor. It doesn't come with VGA display output so you have to use an HDMI TV or monitor. It also doesn't come with an air mouse so you would have to purchase one separately. See the link in the description area for a great selection in air mouse and mini touchpad keyboards. On this mini PC you have the luxury of running Netflix in two ways, which is directly from a web browser, or by downloading the app from the Windows Store. I installed the Netflix app from the Windows Store and let's see if it can play in HD quality. Netflix plays in HD and 4K quality on this PC once you have the required subscription. Another great entertainment feature of this mini PC is the ability to play YouTube videos in as high as 8K quality. I will play an 8K video sample just to show you that it can play on this device. However, even though I increased my internet speed to 60 megabytes, it still can't stream the video properly, and I have to settle with 4K quality.
I will now play some 4K video samples to see how it handles the playback. Three of the samples played OK, with the Jellyfish video at 400 megabits per second bitrate having some difficulty. I will now run some games from the Windows Store. This mini PC does not have the power of a gaming desktop, so don't try to run games in excess of 5 GB as the graphics details will be difficult for this mini PC to handle. Pull out your victory dance yet. You still need to cross the finish line. The games ran ok, and the graphics was of a high quality. So this brings to an end the Windows operating system. Most of you who followed my last mini PC review of the Kotlix GN41, I demonstrated how exciting it was to dual boot into a full standalone version of Android 8.1, and the kind of super benchmarks and performance you could get from running Android on Intel Windows hardware. Well, I have done it again, and this time I did it the same way by using the storage expansion bay on this PC. I installed the latest version of Android x86 onto the 500GB SSD in the storage expansion bay, and set the BIOS to boot directly off of the SSD and not the M2 port whereby preserving my Windows 10 operating system, leaving it untouched. Before I proceed I want to clear up some things that Android x86 users and enthusiasts might want to ask. Firstly, 
for the latest Android 8.1 x86 to work on the Kotlix U500, you cannot allow the Android installation to format the drive. You have to format the drive on Windows using the ext4 format, and then proceed to install without formatting a second time during the install process. Secondly, booting automatically to Android x86 can be tricky to configure. You have to configure the UEFI hard disk drive BBS properties and set option 1 to Android x86. And thirdly, there is no audio pass-through from the HDMI ports as yet. However, you have audio via the earphone jack, so use a male-to-male -male earphone cable to your TV or receiver, or use an analog-to-optical adapter to get audio. Android x86 is still a work in progress, they have come a long way, but there is still some drivers and codecs that need optimizing. So to quickly demonstrate what you currently get on Android x86, I will open the settings area. Here the operating system is Android 8.1, the model is the U500. If I go to the storage setting, here you can see I have 500GB of storage to play with. The launcher has the same default layout and features of the Nova launcher, so you don't need to install the Nova launcher. However, Nova launcher installs and works fine on this mini PC. The launcher also comes with a navigation and notifications bar for multitasking. Android x86 gives you two options. To have your PC rooted. Or not to have it rooted. It contains a root access switch in the developer options. This paves the way for anyone wishing to install Google Widevine Level 1 by registering the PC's ID to get the Play Store certified. This brings me to the DRM information. Currently the operating system does not have Google Widevine support, so Netflix does not work. However, once you certify the Play Store you will be able to run Netflix. I will now quickly browse through the ADER64 system and hardware information. These are the Wi-Fi and LAN speed results. I got maximum speeds from all channels on my new 60GB internet package on every attempt. I now show the super high results of the different benchmarks in comparison to regular TV boxes. So running Android x86 on this mini PC sets a new record in benchmark scores on my channel. I install the both versions of YouTube, and both versions play up to 1080p quality. It is a world seemingly familiar. It will take you to another world. I will now run just a few 4K video samples using the Kodi Media Player.
samples played okay, but not all 4K samples will play due to codec issues. Miracast works via the AirScreen application. You also have AirPlay and DNLA. For my Android gaming community, I will play some top Android games to put this great hardware to the test, and at the same time I will also show that gamepad keymapping works on this PC. Hit straight to the field. The bowler is bowling from his favorite aim. Batsman can't find the gap. That was the best Android gaming I ever had. Everything worked as it should, I was able to use Tincore keymapping app without issues, and the 3D graphics rendering is of the highest quality Android games can offer. In summary the Codelix U500 is a dream of a mini PC to buy. In this review we saw this PC in action on two separate operating systems. The hardware is from Intel, so you know you're dealing with the best brand in computing hardware. The CPU and GPU performance beats any M-Logic or Rockchip TV box hardware hands down. The RAM and storage can be easily upgraded. You can use a SATA SSD or an M.2 SSD card. You have four USB ports and a Type-C port. You also have two HDMI ports for dual monitor display. It runs on a licensed Windows 10 operating system, where you have all the functions of a regular desktop or laptop, and the Windows gaming resulted in the best graphics for a mini PC. YouTube can play up to 8K quality once you have enough internet speed to stream it. I was able to install a separate Android operating system using a 500GB SATA SSD hard drive. Android x86 runs great on this PC with minimal issues, and the benchmarks and gaming performance was outstanding. And finally, this mini PC comes with its own CPU cooling fan that is quiet, and does a great job at keeping it within a safe operating temperature. The only issue I had with this mini PC is that some of my 4K video samples failed to play smoothly. Thanks for watching, and sorry for this very long video, I always try to cover as much details as possible. 
If you are interested in the Codelix U500, links were placed in the description area directly below this video and on my website, along with the Android x86 community website. Again thanks for watching, remember to like this video, share it on social media sites, it helps to grow and support my channel, and don't forget to subscribe and click the little notifications bell for more TVBox Stop videos.